He's back. <laughs> yeah, a few familiar faces. Hi, how's everybody doing today? Good? Yeah. Enjoying the weather? Yeah. Glad to be inside? Yeah. I bet. All right. Um, well, I'm, I'm sure we all know why we're here. Uh, the star of the uh, show, Constantine, if we can bring him right out, Matt Ryan. There he is. <laughs> How you doing, Matt? Good, good. Nice <laughs> You've been good. Hi, guys. Yeah, you. I see you get uh, got from uh, whatever hotel or anything here. Uh, dry. Yeah, yeah. It's, That's uh, nice. It's raining out there, right? I love the rain though, because I'm from Wales. Wales. Now I was going to say you're from Wales. Obviously, used to a little precipitation. Yeah, but not this warm. You know, the the, the heat and the rain at the same time is uh, yeah. quite Yeah. Something. Yeah. How was that growing up uh, in Wales? What kind of a what kind of a childhood you have over there? Oh, it was amazing, man. I mean, uh, in Wales, you've got some of the nicest landscapes and, and beaches in Europe. The only problem is it rains for nine months of the year. So, <laughs> when I was a kid, I used to grow up, and uh, when I was growing up, my parents used to take me and my brother walking on the beach in the rain. In the so rain. Hence, so. I like the rain. Yeah. yeah we used yeah. to dress up for it, and it used to be freezing. But uh, you know, I've uh, ever since I've always had a. Had a, had a thing for the rain. And uh, as, as far as celebrities out of Wales goes, you're in good company, right? Yeah, there's, yeah, a, you, uh, there's, there's uh, a bunch of people. Uh, Anthony Hopkins and uh, Richard Burton was yeah. on there, and uh, my, my friend uh, Luke Evans, who's... Uh, and of course, uh, Tom Jones, Tom the Jones. singer Tom Jones. Some of the yeah. ladies out there might uh, remember good old uh, Tom Jones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I guess everybody kind of wants to know what's the what's the status of Constantine. Well, we, as you all know, we um, we have we have not been picked up for a second season. Yeah, I know. I know everybody's disappointed, uh, as just as disappointed as as me and all the cast and the producers were. No doubt. Um, but you know, we think that we did a, a really good job. Hopefully, you got. You know, we've had some great feedback from all of you guys. So, um, so we're pretty proud to have, uh, you know, had the chance to kind of do, and for me to play such an amazing, iconic character. Do you feel that uh, television these days gives shows enough time to cultivate an audience? Or? I don't know. I mean, I, I think television's changing significantly mm -hmm. now, especially with all the Netflix and Amazon and, and Hulu and all these other kind of mediums where you can watch TV. And I think that the, the, the big networks, you know, they, they have a different system. And, uh, and I think that sometimes they, they don't. I, I, I especially do think that in a case with Constantine that they kind of, they should have, you know, kept us around for longer, you know? But, um, but yeah, I think, that, I think that, you know, television culture is changing and dramatically. And, uh, it really is. I've, I've noticed uh, over the years, uh, looking at television history, some of the most popular shows ever mm. were not critically acclaimed at first. Maybe they needed a couple of seasons to get some traction. And it just seems like, you know, the almighty dollar is more important now than the art that goes out there. I think that, like, what happened with Constantine is um, they, they held back our air date so that our air date would be um, around about Halloween. And normally they would give a show seven episodes on the air before kind of making a decision before they pick up the back nine. Now, with us, because we started later, that meant we only had four episodes that had aired before the network had to start making their decisions. And in all fairness to the network, they really did try to give it as much chance as possible. I think that, you know, we, we were in a bad time slot to begin with. Mm. That wasn't the best of time slots. And what happened was most of our demographic were watching the show, but they weren't watching it at 10 p.m. on a Friday night. They were watching it on the Saturday or the Sunday or the Monday. So uh, we, we actually had like, uh, an increase of 85% in the numbers over the what, what they call the plus three numbers, which is mm -hmm. like up to three days after the show has aired. So in that case, I mean, that was kind of unheard of. Like there was never that much of a leap in, mm -hmm. the, in the plus three numbers, which, were, which was great, but obviously, sadly, not enough to keep us on the air. I think when you look at how TV judges the popularity of shows, the system is kind of archaic. It's uh, the old Nielsen system. They would say, all right, who's watching a show that's on right now? Yeah. And that's gone. It's all a lot of uh, on demand. You watch it whenever you want. Uh, 
and that's how it's done. Pause it, go to the bathroom, yeah, that's come how, back. That's how I watch TV, you know. Exactly. I, I, I binge watch, and that's what I love about like Netflix is, uh, you know, the way that you can they release it all at the same time, so you can just sit down. I, I normally just like <laughs> watch it all in like three days or something, you know, just <laughs> and then just like watch it all and come out like bright lights, bright lights. What, that, that's the way. That's the way I like to watch TV, and I think that's the way a lot of people do, and um, and that's the way it's certainly going, you know. But I think that that that, that they'll adjust. They are adjusting how they how they review the so-called numbers, and I mm -hmm. think that the support that this show has had online from all of you guys is is one of the reasons they're doing that because they, they realize that there is such a, uh, a strong support for the show out there and such a, a, a hardcore fan base and following for the show that it's made them kind of, you know, rethink their whole, yeah. whole way of, of, of how they analyze it. They've got to update how they, uh, how they uh, check on the popularity of shows. It's just, yeah. what, have, what have you been uh, binge watching? What, 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 what do you um, watch? I wa well, I binge watched all of fi five seasons of Breaking Bad, like all, <laughs> like, I think it was like in a week. <laughs> I like, yeah. came out and I was like, what just happened? You almost feel like you were doing meth when you're yeah. done binge, yeah. binge watching. It's I did. <laughs> uh, that and Game of Thrones, obviously, which I love. Yeah. I, I do the same with Game of Thrones, is I'll wait until all 10 episodes have been aired so that I can watch them all together, you know? But what a minefield you have to walk through on social media and even talking to your friends. It's like, yeah, did you see Game of Thrones? Shut up! I know. Shut up! Yeah, I saw, I saw, uh, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. You, you do it. It's, it's hard, isn't it? Because, you know, you go on Twitter or Facebook or anything and your friends are talking about it and you just have to... <laughs> yeah, you can't, like, you yeah. can't but listen. I'm currently watching Peaky Blinders. Which is, which is awesome, it's so cool, it's such a great TV show. And what's that? Uh, uh, that's, uh, it's that's not a, familiar. Uh, that's on, um, on Netflix, it's on Netflix, oh, okay. right? It's a Netflix original uh, with um, Cillian Murphy and uh, it's about basically post-World War I, uh, kind of the, 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 the rise of kind of the underworld of the Midlands in the UK. And, uh, oh, that sounds, uh, yeah, that sounds cool. The, it, it really is great, Netflix and Amazon and uh, the original programming that's mm -hmm. coming out. And it does give actors uh, a lot more avenues to pursue, to look at. Uh, and it's a viable entertainment form now. I, I think years ago, what was it? Movie stars wouldn't do TV. Yeah. And then TV people wouldn't do cable. And then you got to cable. And now it's, yes, Netflix. Some amazing shows are out there uh, with a lot more freedom than the networks uh, give a lot of these um, other programs. Yeah, definitely. I think that uh, it's it's... In now, you know, movie stars want to do, you know, True Detective. I mean, like, well, that's one of my oh, favorite amazing. shows. It's amazing, right? And, you know, to be able to flesh a character out over five seasons is, you know, a lot more satisfying than, you know, just doing a movie. I imagine I haven't got the chance to do that. Because, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I but, don't you know, doubt I, you will. <laughs> I, I liked, I, you know, I like the prospect of that, especially with a character like Constantine, who, uh, you know, where there's 300 issues of Hellblazer, all the new 52 stuff, and then, you know, the, the the next stuff that's coming out, you know, to be able to really go through that whole catalog was uh, was a really exciting prospect for all of us, you know. And it, it was a bit of a no-brainer for me, really. You just go look at all this amazing source mm. material, you know. All we need to do is transpose it to the to the TV. You know? Did you watch the Keanu Reeves movie, or were you trying to keep away from maybe? I love how everybody laughs at that. It's like, oh, no, no, I did. I'm I, Constantine. I I really. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I gotta be honest, I really liked the movie. I, I saw the movie before I knew anything about the comics or, or the part of Constantine. So I watched it as a kind of standalone thing and I enjoyed it. I didn't think it was the best of movies itself, but I enjoyed it for a standalone, uh, standalone film. And then when I was auditioning for the part, uh, my, one of my really good friends, uh, he has a comic book company called Improper Books, and his favorite comic book is, was Hellblazer, and his favorite comic book character was Constantine. So, and I knew that. He'd been talking about it for years in the background, and so I was like, Ben, you know, uh, that's not Ben Kenobi, you know, but the Ben. <laughs> so I said that like, uh, but I, I called him, I was like, Ben, you know, uh, Constantine, you know, what can you tell me about it? And he was like, he sat me down and he was like, right, okay, this is what you need to read and this is the way it needs to be played. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then from there, I started to read all the Hellblazer comics. And then I kind of realized that the character portrayal wasn't uh, as true as we wanted it to be uh, in the comics, you know, and, uh, mm -hmm. and we, we did want, want to kind of stay as true as we could to the comics. And that's what you were doing, uh, staying Trying true to, to the comics. Because yeah. a lot of people, uh, they, what's that? You did a bloody good job. Oh, thank you. 
Bloody That's good. Right. Bloody good. Thank you. Uh, there is a fine line between adhering to the comic book mm. and making entertaining television. Because, I mean, obviously, comic book people are very, very faithful to the storyline of, of the, the book. And, and people have their own ideas visually, how they want it to look, how they want the character to be portrayed in film or on television. Uh, do, do you guys have discussions about that? Like, oh, we are going to really piss off some people out there. Um, I think that the, the major thing for David Goya and Daniel Serrano and myself was to try and be as faithful as we can to the comic books. And, you know, I think for TV, you're transposing something to TV uh, and within that medium, you know, you have to bring on a, a new audience as well as the, you know, the, 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 the hardcore hellblazers, you know, the, that, that fan base. So, you know, you have to kind of make them a little bit TV friendly. So in the mm -hmm. first couple of episodes, we were, you know, doing that to invite them in. And, and I think the great thing would have been, uh, you know, if we had gone seasons down the line, then we could have really got him to that place where he was really, you know, you know, the, the John that you read in some of the comics where I was just like, oh, my God, this guy is so dark. It's awesome, you know. But, you, you know, we weren't quite able to do that early on because you have to, you know, if you make him too much of a bastard, then you know, people are going to turn it off. So, you know, you, you have to bring in a new audience before you know you can actually really, really go there. But that, that was the plan. And, um, mm. and, and for me as well, I always, I always carried a comic book around with me. And whenever I was struggling with a role or thinking, oh, I don't know what's going on or how John would be in this situation, it would, it would be that I would just open a comic book, the one that I was reading at the time. And, you know, it's so, they're so visual comic books. You know, you just see a panel and you're like, I get it. I get it, mm. you know? And it would help me so much. It, was, it became like my Bible. Everywhere <laughs> I went, I was just like, you know, with a comic book and stuff. And, you know, that's the other cool thing, man. I mean, my research for this part was reading comic books. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> How bad is that, it's right? great. It's like, <laughs> it's like when I did Assassin's Creed, uh, my research oh, yeah. for that game... <laughs> thanks. Uh, when, when I did that, my research was, I have to play Assassin's Creed 3. And I, was living with, <laughs> and I was living with a bunch of friends of mine in London at the time, and they were like, man, you know, you're just sitting around all day, playing video games. I mean, what are you doing? I was like, man, this is research. <laughs> this is my job. This is what I get paid to do, you know? And that's so cool, isn't it? I mean, you know, that, that's what I love about this, this job as well, you know? Sometimes you do a Shakespeare role, and you're, you know, you're researching the Hundred Years' Wars in, in, in England, and, you know, other days, you, you know, you're, you're, you're reading, uh, trying to read 300 comic books in, in a month. You know, which I didn't get to do, sadly, but... Uh, and get a little gaming in yeah, on, exactly. on the side. Yeah, uh, cool as far job. as Assassin's Creed goes, uh, d doing the voice acting for that, mm. I don't think people realize how tedious that is and how, how much, you know, it's like, oh, work, what are you doing? Mm. You're in a studio a long time saying a lot of lines to yeah. the point where your throat is, is burning. Yeah, well, what's funny is, like, the way the video games are going now, uh, it's amazing. I mean, the technology. From the first Assassin's Creed game to where we did Black Flag. I mean, we were in a, in a room, in a studio, with 80 cameras around us, mm. in full Lycra suits, all the dots, the head camera in front of you. So it was full motion capture. You know, you look at all those, all those cut scenes, you know, when you get to the part of the mission and then it goes into the scene. Like, we actually, you know, we recorded that for real in a studio. And it's almost like, it's in between a cross of doing theater and film work. Mm. It's a real, it's a new medium. And, and, it, and it so excited me so much. That's why I thought I have to do this. You know, like Andy Serkis, the way he did Gollum, you know, with all the motion capture. It's, it's literally that. And there, I think there was over two and a half hours worth of footage in the game <laughs> of the cutscenes. So, you know, it's like making That's a movie. It's a movie, yeah. It's a movie, yeah. yeah. And then you go in and then you do all the voice stuff for the in-game play stuff. And, uh, and that, that was, uh, I did two, three, we were originally supposed to do two full days in the studio, but we had to do three because I, I kept on blowing my voice out. And I mean, you know, I'm, I'm trained, I, I trained on my voice for years and years at drama school, but still, you know, all those shouting, you know, man the top sales, you know, come over here lads. You know, after about three hours, you're like, ah, kill it, kill it, kill it. <laughs> and they like giving you green tea with honey. I'm like, it's no way. You'd think you're just talking, but there's a lot of over-the-top kind of yelling and, and yeah. acting of that. I myself did. Uh, I was the, uh, the gunsmith in Red Dead Redemption. Oh, you were? Yes. Oh, wow. Come on, come on in, partner. Great, you know, man. one of those things. And uh, I, I said it the other day, but it was very funny that some of the fans of my show, of the Anthony Cumia show, uh, would take my character 
and drag him outside, p beat him up, put him on the train tracks, and let him get run over, and then send me a little video clip of their handiwork. Um, it, it, it was a lot of fun, but just that, like I said, the voice thing, it's not your own voice. You're not just saying, hi, well, um, I have a gun, and I pointed it at you, and uh, you, you know, you're yelling. Yeah, yeah, totally. Well, I'm going to buy that game now and do exactly the same. Do the same it. exact <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah. I have a few other friends that have done video games. We did a couple of, because I know the guy over at um, Rockstar Games, right. so we did uh, a few of the Grand Theft Auto games oh, wow. and, and whatnot. Cool. Yeah. Wow, man. If you uh, hear um, let me GTA, I actually right. sang the Pisswasser beer song. Piss Wasser, this is be Yeah, that was, that was me, thanks. Uh, Great, man. But, <laughs> but I have other friends that were in the same game that uh, were just flamethrowered, and they send wow. the video clip like, hey, look, dude, you, you're on fire. You're like, thanks. <laughs> this isn't fun. <laughs> but it, it's an interesting medium in that, like, how do you take direction in that suit, and how is it different than just on a, a stage or in front of a camera? Well, it's funny. The first thing is you're in a Lycra suit. So you turn up on the first day and, you know, your ego is, you know, you, there's no room for ego. You're just like, okay, guys. You are exposed. Yeah, you are exposed. And you just get down to work. But with the whole process of it, it took me about a week to kind of get into it, you know. At first, I felt like a dog in a muzzle because you've got this helmet on with a camera right in front of your face. And I was kind of like... I kept on moving like this. I was like, I can't this thing in front of my face. So it took me about a week to kind of get up to speed with the whole process. And the guys that um, work on these games all the time were amazing with that. But, um, you know, it, it's so funny. The, it, it's like doing theatre. Literally, you do it for real in the space with other actors. And then... Uh, you really have to use your imagination because there's nothing there, you know? You have some props like a sword or a gun, but they're literally just sticks with dots on them. So the sticks become, uh, they become a cup to drink out mm. of, they become a, a gun to shoot, a sword to, to slice with, you know? So you, you know, it reminded me of like when I was a kid running around on the village green and like finding sticks, you know, which were shaped like guns. <laughs> and then you'd like run around and pretend you were in a, in a movie or something. And it reminded me of that, that part of your imagination that you, uh, that, that you use then. And you really have to kind of go there in your head. So it's really exciting. The technology like has just gotten amazing. Oh, it's crazy. So I mean, while we so were doing the game, the technology was changing. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, I think I went through three different headset changes. So, and, and they really hurt your head. Like, we used to call them the cranial crunches because they <laughs> oh, put them God. on. And so that they don't wobble, they do them really tight. So after about an hour, you've Oof. got like a blinding headache. And, <laughs> but then they were developing new ones as we were going along. So I think we went with through three different yeah, types of helmets. Yeah, that's how fast it's yeah, changing. Yeah. You talk about uh, stage work in the theater. Mm. Uh, Shakespearean actor. Oh, uh, yeah. That's a, I find that so interesting because, uh, uh, look, uh, us Americans, you know, we love our TV and movies and stuff. And then when it comes to Shakespeare, you really have to be a, a fan of, of true theater, I think, to appreciate that. I'm not bad mouthing anybody. I, you know, I've sat and watched some really lousy stuff and laughed. And well, I think the thing with Shakespeare, isn't it? It's like, I hated Shakespeare at school. I absolutely Hard to understand. hated it. Yeah, <laughs> and I was just like, but it's not to be read. It's meant to be played. It's meant to be acted and watched. And I think that, like, um, you know, the, the, the thing for me was I hated it. I hated it uh, growing up and in school. And, um, and then when I went to drama school, I kind of got on with it okay. But then... Uh, on the first day of drama school, we all sat around t on a table and they said, what would be your ideal favorite role? And loads of people said, I'd like to work for the Royal Shakespeare Company. And uh, I was just like, I never want to do that. I want to do like gritty, real dramas. And, and my first theater gig outside of drama school was lead role of the Royal Shakespeare Company. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so I, I had to like it. <laughs> but the funny thing is, is I spent three years at the Royal Shakespeare Company and didn't do one Shakespeare play. <laughs> really? Yeah. I did like all the Shakespeare's contemporaries and, and other stuff. And then later on, I went on to do um, some other great Shakespeare plays. But. So many amazing actors have done Shakespeare. And it, it would seem like it would be very difficult to gauge how well you're doing. Yeah, I mean, um, it's, it's always a funny thing, isn't it? I mean, the language, for one, is something to wrap your head around, you know? You, you have to study that. It's like, why don't they speak weird. English? Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? But, um, but once, once you... Once you it's, I, for me, it's like... Um, I think Al Pacino said this once when, when he was doing um, uh, Looking for Richard, which was a documentary about him mm -hmm. in, in uh, Richard III, and he said it's like rap. 
You know, it's like if you don't listen to rap music and then you listen to rap, sometimes you just can't hear the lyrics, you know? And it's, you have to kind of tune your ear into it. And once you do and you get a hold of it, you get a hold of the rhythm, then you're like, wow, it's a whole new world, you know? And um, mm. not the song from Little Mermaid, because that's just popped into it. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so and, and, and it was like that for me. As soon as I kind of got a hold of it, I kind of fell in love with it. And um, I think it's awesome. Yeah. The, uh, the movie Layer Cake, uh, obviously, just one of those great kind of indie move indie feel movies yeah. um and uh daniel craig in that did you did you ever see him as uh, bond when uh um i i i don't know that was my first job out of drama school so mm -hmm. i was just like, wow really <laughs> and i was playing a, a junkie so i was like how do i feel like a junkie so i i i remember i drank about 12 cups of coffee and i was like this <laughs> <laughs> i think the effect worked but, you know. yeah those uh it, it seems like those type of roles uh, would suit you well. Yeah, well, thanks, man. I, I, I didn't mean it, and I didn't mean it as an it's insult. Great. But if you watch uh, certain things, like um, whenever maybe there's a, an Irish uh, gang or, or something like that, you would fit in well with that type of. Uh, yeah, I enjoy playing those parts. You know, I enjoy yeah. playing. Uh, well, that's what's so great with Constantine. I mean, like he's a bastard but he's a charming bastard you know and and you know you you get to play a range of emotions you know he's nonchalant and he throws things away and then but he's really got these uh, all this stuff going on underneath and he's a tortured soul and that's why I love the character so much the more I read of him in the comics I was just like wow this is probably one of the best literary characters written in the in the in the last century you know i think it's absolutely amazing yeah and I, and just to get the chance to, to to play him you know um is 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 amazing and i feel blessed and 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 the, and the thing i feel most appreciative about i think is the way that all you guys and the fans have reacted i think like playing such an iconic character you know the, the, the you know I, you could have gone the other way, and like, <laughs> you know, I'd be hiding outside right now. But uh, but no, I think that uh, you know everybody really got behind it, and and, and I'm really appreciative. Like Keanu, maybe if <laughs> you know that would have uh, the. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Of course, the. Um, uh, as far as the, the comic books go, uh, you do need time to kind of cultivate that character uh, on television, a new m medium for for a character that's well known especially through the books because these people that have read it know him at a certain point you can't then introduce him at well, that point yeah. on television that, that's the interesting thing is like what what's your entry point all right. these people who know the character and then there's all these people who don't know so there's lots of stuff that you know you could be talking about stuff that you assume people know and then all these people who don't know the hellblazer comics would be like what are they talking about you know and i think the pilot kind of for me the pilot was um it was, you know, there's always a lot going on in a pilot. It was like set piece after set piece. It was so pacey. There wasn't kind of that much character development, I don't think. And, uh, and you know, in the, thir the, the, the second and the third episode, you can literally see us kind of trying to figure out what to do with the show, you know, and, and me trying to find my feet and the writers. And, but I think you get that a lot on television, and I think that you have to give things a chance. I certainly now will give things a lot more of a chance than I would have before mm. this experience, because I know that we found our feet round about episode four. I think it was the A Feast of Friends, episode four, which was when I suddenly went, okay, I think I, I really know who this guy is now, you know, and uh, get underneath his skin. And, and for that, I think that, you know, you do have to give things a little bit of a chance when, when, when you watch something. I think also you get a little more free reign as time goes by. If you look at a show like The Walking Dead, which yeah. obviously uh, kind of veered, veered away from the, the book series and um, Game of Thrones also. Hey, yeah. we got our book. And, and I, when people come up and go, yeah, I read the, uh, the books to Game of Thrones. Instantly, I want to take the duct tape out and just shut their mouths because, again, I don't want to hear it. But uh, there, there is a time where you can then start maybe branching out and not anger those hardcore fans of the, the comics and, and the yeah, books. Yeah, I think so. And, and then also, I mean, within the, the DC universe, I mean, there, there's so many amazing characters that you can introduce and, and kind of there's lots of different ways you could take the character. I mean, I, my, my dream was to get to the Dangerous Habits run. I was just like, that's my favorite comic of all of them. And I was just like, if we get to that, that would be... That would be amazing, you know. But I also, my, my, my kind of 
my other thing that I wanted to do was uh, do the Family Man uh, run because I thought what's interesting about that is, you know, John. <laughs> John is used to fighting demons and, and, and all these things, but when it comes to people, you know, he's, he's, he's not the best at really relating to people, is he? Let's be honest. And I just thought that would be a really interesting dynamic to kind of, for, to, to see how that would play out, you know? And there's a great line in those comics when he says something like that, doesn't he? He says, uh, like, yeah, demons, ghosts, whatever, that's fine, but people, you know, and uh, so I thought that that would have been a really interesting storyline to have, to have done for the show. Is it odd to kind of know what's going to happen? There are so many television series where the actors and actresses have no idea where their characters or their story is going, and it's all laid out for you. Yeah, I mean, well, what's great about it is so many artists have drawn him, so many great writers have written him in, in comics that, you know and all these different storylines and, and stuff, and, and then you, you don't know what the writers and the producers are gonna pick from, wh which way they're gonna, mm. you know, so every time you get a script, you're like, okay, where are we going, you know? And it's really, really exciting in that way. And, and obviously, as the character as well, the, uh, David and Daniel were so open to kind of a conversation with me about it, how I felt about stuff. And, and that was also a fantastic part of the experience is, you know, it really was a collaboration. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it, it would have been exciting to kind of see where it went. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, also, one of your co-stars, and I'm sorry, his name slips my mind right now, from Lost. Oh, uh, uh, Harold. Yeah, yeah Harold, Harold from Lost. Mm -hmm. Now, you talk about a show where no one knew what was going to be going on I next. Know, right? that kind of, yeah. So, uh, yeah, he must have been like, oh, good. Well, at least yeah, I, I have like, some Whoa. outline yeah. of what this is going to be. Well, I think the original <laughs> idea of the Manny character was to build him in slowly. That's why in the first season, mm -hmm. what is the first season now, he's, he, he you know, he gradually comes in. I mean, that episode when, when I trap him in the body, I mean, that was the funniest thing to film, man. <laughs> he was like going to town. I, I, I just couldn't stop laughing throughout the whole episode, <laughs> really? like filming that. He was so funny. And, um, but yeah, they were building his character up so that uh, possibly at the end of the season, he would, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd figure out that he was behind the brujeria and all those things. But then obviously when they didn't pick up the back nine, they kind of pushed that storyline mm. closer. Um, uh, so it was more of a surprise, which I think was a great thing, you know, that it came out of nowhere. You're like, what? You know, and I can remember reading it and just going, man, yeah, they've got to give a season two. They have to. I mean, this is, I've, got, I've got to see what happens, you know? But, uh, you, know. you want to uh, take a couple of questions? Yeah, sure. Could, uh, do that, obviously. Uh, let's see, right up front here first. Yeah. Yes. I'm a bit of a lightweight. <laughs> oh, John. In what way? John Joe. He means drinking. He's Northern Irish. How can you compete with that? I mean, I'm Welsh, but he's Northern Irish. <laughs> it's the Olympics of drinking. <laughs> right. No, I haven't. I've had moonshine. We shot the show in Atlantis. I definitely Oh, had man, yeah, then you did. <laughs> Those were not good days filming on the day after. <laughs> no. Really? Well, I'll have to try some then. <laughs> right. Thanks. <laughs> okay. uh, sir, right back there with the uh, beard. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's interesting about that episode is, uh, and again, like, how we kind of adapted characters, like Chaz, for instance, you know, and we give Chaz the, the power that he has, and then everyone's like, well, how has he got this power? And then we did the episode, you know, the, that, that episode when we reveal him. And the same thing kind of with Felix Faust as well, is kind of adapting him slightly as well. And I think that's something that the, the show creators took liberty with, but also, you know, kept within the same world, as it were. And I, I thought that was great. I liked that. Cool. Uh, miss? Hi. Ah, most interesting. 
I don't know about interesting, but one of the most uncomfortable things was uh, when I was, dr- I was covered in blood all day uh, with just a thong on. Uh, and that blood, it gets really sticky really fast. So, like, you know, I, 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 I couldn't sit down. And it was, like, literally a full day. So I'm walking oh. around with my boots and nothing on all day, just <laughs> drinking coffee, trying to, like, not sit down. And in the end, I was like, I'm sitting down. So they put some towels down for me. And I sat down, and then they were like, right, we're ready for you. And I went to get up, and I was like, Psh. And it was literally like, I can imagine like women getting waxed, you know. It was like, I had all, I had all the, the like, make hair and makeup department like ripping these towels off my back. And I'm like, ah! And then, and then, and for the rest of it then, I had the whole makeup department following me around with like spritz cans to keep me wet so that the blood wouldn't dry. Oh my that was, that God. Was, that was out of a day. Yeah. That is interesting and uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, over here, sir. Um, <laughs> yeah. And they were like, we're waiting to see what happens with the show and whether it gets a second season or not, but we're leaving it open because we really like Matt Ryan and we really want him to reprise his role. Uh, right, yeah, I've, I've heard the rumors and, um, and, and I think that it would be uh, really exciting. I think that it would be um, uh, it'd be cool to see what they how they wrote those two characters interacting, you know. But um, yeah, that's that's, uh, that's yeah. as I said, it's a rumor as far as I know. The Flash, you know, Flash is introducing different universes like Earth One, Earth Two. I mean, you could be Earth One, I could be Earth Two, and we can sell it like that. Okay. This guy should go to the networks you, and, you, you should, and pitch man. for you. It's, I'm putting you on payroll. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's go to the back there. A gentleman with the tie over there. He's sore. Sure. You mentioned that you had a couple of favorite story arcs in Dublin Fight. Um, were there any moments that you Well, my, my favorite, my favorite run of the comics is is the Dangerous Habit. You know, you know the scene where he tricks the devil into drinking into drinking what he thinks is beer, and then it's holy water. You know, that, there's that moment which it's it always stuck in my head, and the moment when he's uh, talking to the guy in the bed, uh, uh, and and you know he knows he's gonna die. I was just like, wow, man, that's. That's uh, really cool, but I did. I, I didn't. Uh, I'm not going to tell you whether or not I, I did it in front of them. <laughs> uh, back there, in the corner. Hey. Um, my favorite episode was uh, the Saint of Last Resorts Part Two. Yeah, I mean the Saint of Last Resorts Part One and Part Two, and I lo- I love that uh, that whole storyline with bringing in Anne Marie, and I I really liked the show when you connected Constantine to his past, you know? Like when, when you had the Gary Lester episode, that's another one of my favorites. And, um, and then with Anne-Marie, I think I really liked those episodes more than the kind of Demon of the Week episodes, you know? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, right up front here. Ah. Um, it's great. Uh, I, um, Liddy's talking about um, uh, uh, my, my, one of my best friends, Joseph Morgan, who's um, on the originals. He plays Klaus on the originals. And uh, we've known each other since we, were, since we were in high school, so to speak. And, uh, and we've made a couple of movies together. We've made a couple of films. Um, and uh, uh, we, the first one was called Armistice, which was uh, it's kind of a, a horror thriller. And then we made something completely different where we starred opposite each other called 500 Miles North. But it hasn't come out yet. Uh, we don't know when it's going to come out. Hopefully, I would like to think that we'd be able to get it in festivals kind of coming up to next year. That would be the ideal thing. But it's great. I love working with Joe because we write together. Me and Joe, when we were out of work 
years and years ago, we were driving around putting posters up for the circus. And uh, literally, and it was like out of work <laughs> actors going, we're never going to get anywhere, you know, <laughs> putting up posters. And, and what we would do is like put up a bunch of posters, put the rest in the bin, in the trash, and then go and write the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and we actually wrote our first movie doing that. And, uh, and then our, our partnership has kind of continued and hopefully it will continue for a long time. I got to ask you, uh, the Twitterverse and um, Facebook, and how involved are you? Because especially in the world of adapting comic books to other mediums, there can be some dissatisfied customers. <laughs> how do you handle uh, social been, media? Uh, it's been amazing to me. I didn't even know what Twitter was. I think I was calling it... Uh, I think I was, I was calling it Twitter, but then I would say, hey, man, I'm just going to send a little twit. <laughs> People be like, no, it's called tweeting. I was like, tweeting? Tweet, 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 tweet. Okay, got it. And I, I didn't know, I, I literally was not on it. And then when the show came up, I was like, okay. And then I got up to like 50,000 followers now, which is like, it's amazing, you know? And, but it's been really, really nice to me. Everybody uh, uh, who's commented on there has, has been fantastic. And That's cool. Like, That'll go away. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I wouldn't like, I, would, I didn't read many reviews of the show. Uh, I, I purposefully don't read many reviews of stuff anyway. I think that, you know, if you believe the good ones, then you have to believe the bad ones. And, and, there you uh, go. So I kind of try. But, but then the feedback on, on Twitter when the show came on was, a, was, was uh, you know, it, it was okay at first. But then as the season went on, people really realized, I think, that we were really trying to do our best to make it as authentic and, and as close to the, uh, as the comics as possible. And, and the response was absolutely brilliant. There seems to be two schools of uh, thought with actors. Um, Actors that watch their stuff and actors that never watch their stuff. Where do you fall into that? Um, I, I don't know. I kind, of, um, I kind of watch my stuff back, but I try to not, not to watch it too... Uh, I try not to wait too long to watch it because mm. otherwise I cringe. You know, <laughs> I you know, it's like that thing when you hear your own voice. You know, and you're like, oh, do I sound like that? I mean, if I'm in it and I'm doing it and I watch it back, then I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. But if it's like been two years and I watch something, I'm like, oh my God, what was I doing? Well, so, that's uh, almost like a compliment because it, it, it kind of shows you that you have grown as an actor, perhaps gotten better at something. And then you look back and go, oh my God, what was I even thinking trying? Yeah, ho hopefully that's the case. <laughs> hopefully that's the case. Have you ever uh, watched something and thought like, God, I should have done this or that? Yeah, are you, are you almost everything. I've really over critical of. Yeah, I think, uh, especially with, with Constantine as well, you know, there was a few episodes when I was like, oh my God, you know, that, that's, that's, that's not John. And then, but then I can remember watching them at the time and going, okay, I, you know, and kind of seeing what I was doing. But I I think it's the same with anything. The more perspective you have on it, kind of, the more critical you are of yourself as well. And the, um, you know, you have a whole crew of people that are creating this. So maybe you might think that a take you did was, damn, I nailed it. Mm. That was the take. <laughs> and then they decide to go with something else. Do you, do you get upset about that as an actor? No, I think like uh, with the medium of TV and film, you kind of give that over to the director anyway. I, I, th that's what I love so much about theater. You know, you're your own editor, mm. you know, you're in front of a live audience and, you know, you, you really get that, that conversation between them and, you know, uh, whereas with film and television, you know, some of your best work can be left on the cutting room floor and you, you don't have, you know, the decision to kind of uh, uh, to put it in. So Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, right up front here. Oh, bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's, that's a good one. <laughs> Over here. If you're on Arrow, not saying that you are going to be, but if you're on Arrow, what would you like to be the enemy or the opposing force of the episode? Would you like to first read Arrow and teach him what's up? I don't know. I think the one thing that uh, I... I uh, what would be interesting is in the comics, John always calls all the superheroes costumes. <laughs> and it'd be great to just like turn around and go, hey, nice leather pants. <laughs> Can't say I'd wear them myself. You know, and that's what I love about John is he's a, he's a, he's a real fleshed out, three-dimensional human being, you know. He's like not your average superhero. He's like, he's a jerk, you know. And, and, uh, and I love the way that he kind of reacts with all, in the comics and the DC universe to all those other characters. And it would just be a little bit of fun, you know, to see how he reacts to, to the Flash and, uh, and, and, and the Arrow or stuff. I don't know. And just goofing on the costume. Yeah, That's so yeah, funny, it man. It is. It's funny. That man. is great. I, I love that about him. <laughs> uh, miss, over here, right? Yeah. Are there any current projects, TV shows, movies, or just something that you'd like to be a part of going forward? 
all that I'd like to be a part of. There's loads of this, loads of good stuff out there. I mean, the things that I'm watching at the moment, like Game of Thrones, it would be great to do something in Game of Thrones, like grow my hair long with a big beard, you know? <laughs> it's, it's funny because before I did Constantine, I was doing Henry V in the West End in London, and I had long hair and a big beard. And when I first auditioned for it, I think David Goy was like, yeah, this guy's great, but you know, he looks like Sasquatch. <laughs> and, uh, and then they, they, they really liked me, but then the, 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 the studio were like, no, we don't see it at all. Wow. And then they, they showed them a picture of me in Flypaper, which was a movie I did where I had bleach blonde my hair. And, uh, and they were like, yeah, but, you know, he doesn't look like that now, does he? And I'm like, well, no, obviously I've got long hair and a beard. I'm doing a classical piece. And, uh, and then they kept on coming back. And I think I did like 10 audition tapes in London because I couldn't fly over to L.A. because I was working. And uh, they kept on saying, can you cut your hair a bit? Can you trim your beard? So I trimmed my beard like as much as I thought I could and my hair a little bit. But I was like, that's not going to make much difference. <laughs> yeah. So then they, they went back to the drawing board again. And I think they auditioned over like 400 people for the role. <sighs> yeah. And, th and they went back and they kind of kept on going. And, and luckily enough for me, my play finished and they still hadn't cast it. So they flew me over and I chopped all my hair off. I shaved my beard. And uh, I went into the role, a room, and got the job. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a wow. long audition process. Yeah. It seems like it. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's, it. that's three episodes, <laughs> yeah. and that's it. But just to be in it, do you know what I mean? It's a, it's such a good, you know. So th those kinds of uh, things that I'm watching, you know, I think whatever I'm watching at the moment, I'm like, you know, Peaky Blinders, Game of Thrones, and then like all the movies I watch, I'm like, ah, oh, where was my audition for that role? Did you check out uh, Fargo with Billy Bob? And uh, um, I I haven't checked that oh, out that, yet. No, I, yeah, great I really liked that I loved one. The movie. That was that was good. I guess a new one's coming out uh, this fall. Uh, right. Another another season, but uh, yeah, like I was saying earlier that original programming that is coming out on uh, Netflix opens up so much for uh, actors and writers and, and the whole industry. It's amazing. Yeah. Way back there. No, that's you. <laughs> oh, Doctor Who? Doc oh, Doctor Who. Oh, um, <laughs> sorry, really bad joke. Um, I don't know. I've never thought about that. Never. Th oh, thanks. As, lo as long as he wasn't blonde. <laughs> Dyeing the hair every two weeks, I mean, that's, you know... That's, yeah. Is there anything you feel more comfortable doing? Like, is it uh, drama, uh, romance, comedy, or, or as an actor, do you just kind of try to do your best with all? I've always wanted to do as a broad, uh, wider roles, diversity of roles as possible. I think that sometimes, you know, you get pigeonholed a little bit, so, you know, I've done quite a lot of straight stuff. Uh, but I'd lo I love comedy, you know, and I'd love to do more comedy, I think. But uh, to do, you know, what, what's great is, you know, I, I did Constantine. From Constantine, I went to do a, an independent British movie that was produced by Andrew Lincoln from Walking Dead uh, called Away with um, Timothy Spall and Juno Temple. Uh, and then from that, uh, I'm going to do a play on Broadway. You know, it's like, you know, being able to go f across those mediums is mm -hmm. like, it's awesome. And that's, that's what I love about the, the job, you know? Yeah, you seem like a very well-rounded, actor like you've done many things and uh, and been successful at it mm. it's uh, quite the um, hats off as they say oh, there you go. <laughs> how, do, how do you um do you, do you live in the States now, or...? Oh, it's funny, man. I, I, I rent a room uh, with John Joe O'Neill, who played Gary Lester. Uh, I rent a, a house with him in London. Uh, for the last two years, I've been... Uh, I've rented a house in London, and I've lived there for three weeks. <laughs> it's crazy, which is amazing because it means I've been busy and I've been like bouncing here and there. But I'm currently based in New York. Before that, I was in LA. So I don't really know where my home is at the moment. I mean, I would say it's the UK and it's London, mm -hmm. but uh, I haven't spent much time there over the last couple of years. But I, I love, I mean, America's been so good to me, you know. Like when I first came over here to do a play on Broadway, I did Hamlet on Broadway and, uh, in 2009 with Jude Law. And then, uh, mm -hmm. and then we, you know, we, I went on to do Criminal Minds straight after that and so I you know I've done it's, it's been amazing over here for me and uh, and I love it so how was the criminal minds episode were you uh, I was good Bad yeah, guy. yeah well we did um we did like uh, 13 episodes and we got we yeah. got cancelled after that it was it was great I think that uh I think the problem with that show for any of you guys that know it was you know we were uh supposed to be a part of a red cell group uh which were a, a, a division of the behavioral analysis unit 
Uh, and w originally, we were supposed to do international drug smuggling, child trafficking, assassinations, all that kind of interesting stuff. But then we ended up just doing domestic murder, which is exactly <laughs> like the original team. So I can remember one time saying to the producers, I was like, what's different from us, apart from the fact that we wear leather jackets and work out of a dojo? <laughs> and they're like, mm. but, um, but it was great fun to do. And I got to work with, you know, one of my favorite actors, Forrest Whitaker. So I was like, you know, that was awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. From uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, as I remember, he was the football player oh, back right. when he was a kid. Oh, so right. many, like, amazing actors came out of that silly movie. Yeah. You know, he was in Bloodsport as well. You know that movie, the Van Damme movie? I didn't know that. Really? Like, oh, so it was like, it's Forrest. Like, so cool. I don't think there's, like, watching, watching older movies on television or older TV shows, there's so, I don't know why you get that satisfaction of going, that's the guy that was in, and you just get such a, yeah, I knew that. I yeah, it. yeah. I nailed it. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Little game, I guess. Mm -hmm. that, uh, right here. Um, I'd really like to actually. I've done um, some radio work in terms of radio plays and stuff like that, but um, I, it's something I'd really love to do. Yeah, uh, maybe I'll do more of in the future. Mm -hmm. um, miss, right there in the middle. Hi. Mm. It, it was. It was one of the most satisfying and exhausting kind of. Um, uh, at times on the show, uh, it was it was it, it really took it out of me, you know. And you know, the schedule's so packed anyway, you know. You're working 18 hour days some days, and and um, uh, I, but it was great. I loved it. But yeah, being lifted up on the wires and then you know having to you know do all that stuff, it was it was pretty exhausting. It was. Um, <laughs> they were pretty good actually. They'd like lift me up, I do the stuff, and then they'd like bring me back down. But there was a few times I was hanging there going ah. <laughs> Guys, are we done? I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> but they were, they were pretty good at looking after me with all that stuff. I mean, the, the, all the crew and everything were great on the show, and they'd really look after you, and then, you know, I'd have someone come over because I was tied down and feed me water in a straw and stuff, you know, with a, a, out of a glass with a straw. And, yeah, so they, they looked after me as much as they can. But I had these contact lenses in as well, and because I was sweating with all the makeup, the Oof. makeup was going into my eyes with the contact lenses, so I couldn't see anything. <laughs> And like, and I can remember for a day after, my eyes were just like blurry, because wow. because like the all all the stuff that had gone into my eyes, you know. Yeah. Jeez. Great uh, sir. Hey. On social media, we hear a lot of rumors that Cosby will be picked up by like Netflix or another station or another channel. Do you know any truth of any of them or any actual serious negotiations going on? I have no idea. All I know is that we've been officially released from our contracts. So, um, I mean, you know, DC and Warner has owned the property. Uh, it would be great if they did. I've t I, I told them when I left that I would be up for rep reprising the role if, if down the line if, if they ever wanted to do that. So, I mean, it's something, you know, I'm, I'm doing a play now until, until January. So, um, uh, but if, you know, if they wanted to pick it up after that, then I'd be up for it. It'd be great to kind of continue it, you know. Sure. We have time for uh, one more over here. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> I just okay. took a pill. I'm not Can I have here. one. I love that. That seems like a good one. Well, um, as, uh, as I said, I've, I've just uh, finished doing a movie in the UK, which is called Away, uh, and that was uh, co-produced by, by Andrew Lincoln, actually, and uh, starring Juno Temple and Timothy Spall. That, that should be in festivals next year. And then we have the project um, 500 Miles North, which is a movie that I, I co-produced with, uh, with Joseph Morgan and... Uh, and Ben Reed and Luke Massey. That hopefully will be in festivals next year. And then I'm uh, uh, on September the 1st, I'm off to start rehearsals on a play which will be on Broadway in New York, which will play all the way mm -hmm. through till January the 10th. 
What show is that? that? Uh, it's called Therese Rakan. It's, uh, it's based on a, an 18th century, uh, 19th century novel by a French writer called Emile Zola. It's a great classical piece that doesn't get much, done much, especially in this country, um, with Kira Knightley, who plays the, the title right. role of, of uh, Therese Rakan. So, um, so I'm really excited about that to get back on stage again. As I said, you know, to go from like, you know, con TV, you know, network television to independent movie to to, to Broadway, it's like, it's a dream come true, you know? Well, unless it's the uh, Broadway version of uh, that disaster of Spider-Man they did, at least you won't have to be hanging oh. up from wires and crashing into the orchestra pit. Mm. Um, thank you so much for think, uh, spending think, some think, time. Oh, you want uh, one more yeah, question? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I know, man, I know, it does. I had this, I, no, uh, somebody came up to me before and they were like, so, uh, who did you play in Vikings? I was like, I was never in Vikings. <laughs> I, I know, it's crazy, right? They have me done as like Matt Ryan, one episode, peasant. <laughs> I think someone's taking the mickey. I think someone is, you know? Oh, that's no, great. I, I never did Vikings. It's a great show, though. I like the show. <laughs> yeah, look for him as peasant in it. Yes. Um, that's great. Matt, thanks so much. Thank man. you, what guys. A, a great time. Thank you, guys. You're the best. Thank thanks you, everybody, for coming yeah. down. Great call. Matt Ryan. Thank you, guys.